So, now would you like to hear Rowe's definition of plot? Thought not. But now you can surely empathize. There's a lot that goes into the stuff that happens in a story. There's the temporal movement that comes with action verbs getting the story moving, the need for suspense to grab interest, the question of what interests, the management of constraints and resolution to sustain suspense, the global and the local, the sequence of actions, and the time it takes the reader to take it all in. Surely this is one of the reasons most writers scratch their heads when asked about plot. One of my hopes is that delineating the specific issues embedded under the term plot will sharpen discussions of how to talk about it, teach it, and write it. The tools here, I hope, will serve both as a way for teachers to approach teaching this material, but also a way for learners to self-teach. Nothing has sharpened my writing more than dissecting a piece of elegant writing with the proper tools in hand. If I like a story for its content, I like to map out plot elements, constraints, and resolutions. If a story manages time masterfully, I look at the temporal cues. How does this writer make a scene a scene or a summary more scene-like, etc.? If you think you don't have access to writing classes, meet your local library card. Read great stories and take them apart. I give you full liberty. Please, pull at those seams. Lastly, there are a few things that I should mention here, as they didn't quite fit within the lessons where I'd originally outlined them. So why not pop in a few codas? Coda 1. When thinking about the grammar of a plot, it's not always, maybe even not commonly self-evident, what the magnetic nature of the plot is until the story is finished. You don't know where the story is going as a reader, remember. You only have the full picture at the end. A suspense cue is usually experienced as a feeling that something should be paid attention to. It pops from the background and begs the reader to file it away in their long-term memory. Subsequent cues to constraints are then processed along the lines of, I wonder if this is related to that thing I filed away in the first paragraph, and, Aha, it is, I knew something was up, and, Now things are about to go down. Once the story is over, it pays to go back and see what magnetic roots the author was tickling. Is this a transgression story? And what is it telling us about transgression? Hint, you don't get away with anything. You really do start to see the patterns of what makes great writing great by looking at how great writers deal with plot. They all know what they're doing, at least implicitly. Coda 2 a generally good move in any piece of writing is to bring important things back through the course of the document. When the reader sees something familiar, it offers a sense that the story, article, essay, etc. is being managed well and weaved together by somebody who's going to bring it all back around. If you look closely enough, you'll see this happen in the finest literary stories, though usually subtly. A theme, an object, a happening, even a particular turn of phrase, they recur often like rungs on a ladder, helping the reader understand they're in an ordered progression, meticulously designed to evoke a desired effect. Coda 3. That's it. You now have more explicit functional knowledge about plot than most fiction writers out there. Congratulations. Now, please don't be smug about it. If you're some 20-year-old undergrad in a beginning fiction writing class and the poor graduate student teaching the class doesn't know what you mean by a grammatical plot or duration and hasn't yet figured out that action verbs and linking verbs are the keys to managing movement in a narrative, please, give him a break, will ya? Remember what I said all the way back at the start of this mess? When you knew a lot less about plot explicitly that most fiction writers are Kims, and therefore, so are most teachers of the craft. You can learn a tremendous amount from a Kim. I sure as hell did. Besides, Rose already given you the David side of things anyway. And if you go out to the movies, and inevitably the suspense cues and their underlying magnetic nature jump out at you as if they were screaming, Here! Over here! Pay attention to me! I'm important! Danger! Danger! Wealth! Sex! 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 Don't go spoiling the movie because you're so smart, because that's not really smart at all. And when your friends are surprised or find something you've seen through as deeply meaningful, don't say something smarmy like, I don't know, I thought it was all very pedestrian and obvious and not that well written at all. 
Remember that storytelling is a social experience. If you're a writer, be glad you've still got any friends to go to the movies with at all. Take joy in their joy and hope that your writing will do that for someone someday too. I'm kidding here, of course, but only halfway. This is kind of the lesson in the karate class where they teach you how to kick ass, but that you never should. You're a lethal weapon now, so swagger, but don't strike. And don't think you're that special. You hardly know anything about the narrator yet. Oh,